A warm welcome to this talk, Sunday the 4th of December. Now, the definitive way to diagnose in medicine, unfortunately, is uh, at post-mortem. We can see what's going on. And this is from a post-mortem series from Germany. Now, this is a lymphocyte aggregation. So collections of lymphocytes, these white blood cells, in the intraventricular septum, that's the bit between the right and the left ventricle, of case one, with associated myocardiocyte, that's heart cell destruction. So what we're seeing here is these are the lymphocytes that shouldn't be here. And here we see the damaged heart muscle in a person that was found dead at home within 28 days of COVID uh, vaccination. And um, the, the implications of this we're going to talk about shortly. But this is the photo, this is, this is definitive evidence this is from a group of eminent pathologists in Germany. Uh, pity this research hasn't been done in, in other countries. We've been calling for it for a long time. But there we go. That is the picture. Damaged heart muscle cells with the lymphocytes. And let's make it quite clear. These lymphocytes are not supposed to be there. And of course, the heart muscle cells are supposed to be healthy, not damaged. Um, here's another picture here. Um, this is CD68 positive macrophages. Don't worry about too much what the histopathology is here. But the macrophages are another type of inflammatory white blood cell. And here we can see the dark areas here are the macrophages. And we can also see damaged myocardial cells here. This evidence is uh, definitive and basically non-controversial. It's definitive pathological diagnosis of uh, vaccine injury. And I think we need to say here, because of the uh, regulations we're working under, uh, these are recognised but rare complications. That's the specification. We're allowed to talk about recognised rare complications, and this is what we're talking about, and we can see the pictures here. So we can see that quite clearly. Now, the next one is in lower power, and uh, it's uh, CD pos CD4 positive uh, lymphocytes. In other words, they're t what we call T helper cells. You'll have heard of these ones because these are the ones that are affected by the human immunodeficiency virus. And this is lower magnification. So what we see is this is myocardium here that looks OK, the heart muscle here that looks OK. Then we see an area of infiltration there and we see another area of infiltration there. So we see that the situation is focal. This is a focal pathology. And the trouble is with this focal pathology is you get abnormal electrical activity in these areas. And these are not, it's what we call an ectopic focus, and that can start off all sorts of impulses that can lead to a condition called ventricular fibrillation. And if you're not in a hospital situation with a defibrillator to hand, you're going to die as a result of that. And of course, all these patients were found dead unexpectedly at home. So that is pretty definitive uh, evidence there. Now, I don't want you to take my word for this, of course, as always. Check the sources yourself. It's the research of clinical cardiology, clinical research in cardiology, and it's the official journal of the German Cardiac Society. It's called Autopsy Based Histopathological Characterization of Myocarditis After Anti SARS Coronavirus 2 Vaccination. That's the link. You can download the PDF. This is peer reviewed, this is proper science and definitive pathological diagnosis by groups of leading, a group of leading German pathologists. Basically, these people are doctors who specialise in pathology. This is what they do. And they were very exacting. They're very exacting the way they did this. I'm going to, going to show you that now. It's very good science. Uh, so they did what they call a likelihood assessment of vaccine epimyocarditis. So what they found was there was a lot of epicarditis. Now, you've got the myocardium, and on top of that, you've got the epicardium, which is actually the inner layer of the pericardium, then the tough fibrous pericardium on the outside. So a lot of this pathology was near the surface of the heart. So it was uh, epi, uh, epimyocarditis that they found. Is this a causality or a correlation, of course, is the question. Well, they took the presence of myocarditis with temporal association to vaccine event, and that temporal association with us in 28 days of an mRNA vaccine. Uh, and they, they eliminated other pathology uh, and integration of histological phenotype. That's basically what they see under the microscope. Clinical presentation, that's what they see in the patient. And they, they had the full case details. The reason they, they did these 25 patients was they had the full clinical details. Um, everything was in hand. 
The patients have been found at home. Laboratory findings indicating no alternative differential diagnosis. So we can be fairly sure that these are causal. No, we can't be fairly sure. that They, they, they think there's a high likelihood that these are causal, not a, a, a spurious correlation. And, um, of course, that makes this a rather important video, to be quite honest. Um, now, abstract infographic that they give there speaks for itself. The, uh, the virus, uh, the, the spike protein from the uh, mRNA vaccine getting into the heart, leading to these uh, cardiac uh, arrests. So what happens is the ectopic focus starts behaving in an electrically erratic way, gives off impulses to the myocardium, and instead of contracting meaningfully, the myocardium just fibrillates, and basically that cuts off the blood supply to the myocardium, it cuts off the blood supply to the brain, because your blood pressure essentially goes down to zero, and death ensues issues within minutes of this situation. Unless someone's there to actually shock you with a defibrillator, well, you don't do that anymore. <laughs> they, they, they tend to be automated. Um, but unless someone actually defibrillates you and in ventricular fibrillation, you're going to die. Ventricular fibrillation causes uh, death, unless it's treated with a defibrillator. And of course, in these cases, it wasn't because tragically these patients were found dead at home. So the They've been clinically diagnosed or the patients have been found dead at home. Laboratory tests, so no, sorry, this is in the past. In the past, cases of myocarditis have been uh, diagnosed clinically by laboratory tests or imaging. Um, but here we have definitive histopathological uh, diagnosis. You can't argue with a photograph that's taken under the microscope. So this is really adding to the evidence that we needed to uh, consider this thing objectively. In the context of mRNA-based anti-SARS coronavirus 2 vaccine. Now, this is autopsy-based. We describe cardiac heart uh, autopsy findings and common characteristics of myocarditis. So they found characteristics of myocarditis, but they also found these inflammatory cells with this uh, time correlation from the, um, from the vaccine, but they eliminated other causes of uh, pathology, other causes of disease, as much as they could. Um, so, uh, with vaccine-induced myocardial inflammation representing the likely or possible causes of death. So, it's best that I let them speak in their own, uh, in their own terminology without me putting words in their mouth, without me overstating or understating. This is what the pathologist said in their uh, paper. Uh, vaccine-induced myocardial inflammation representing the likely or possible causes of death. Well, you could certainly see the inflammation because the cells were there that caused the inflammation. I mean, it's good to have inflammation, of course, in the right circumstance, heat, pain, redness, swelling. If you twist your ankle, that helps it to heal. Or if you have inflammation around a wound, that helps it to heal. But this is pathological, immunologically induced inflammation. <clears throat> because it's in the myocardium, um, it, it's such a critical area that that's almost certainly caused the death of these people. But again, using their own words... Uh, likely or possible cause of death, our findings establish the histological phenotype, what it looks like in the real, um, and tragically dead uh, human being of a lethal vaccine-associated myocarditis. So again, choosing the words carefully there, lethal vaccine-associated myocarditis. Standardised autopsies, 25 persons, 25 bodies found unexpectedly dead at home. Uh, so these people were not expected to uh, die, but they were found dead at home. And uh, some of them were able to identify other causes. So they actually had a bigger sample. They had 35. For 10, they were able to identify other causes of death because, of course, people sadly do die. Um, but these 25 were suspect. But there was five where they were uh, had this high, very high index of suspicion. So bodies found dead at home within 20 days of vaccination. And now I expected these to be young men, male 46, female 50, female 62, male 55, female 75. So these are a wide spectrum um, of the age range. And I expected more men than women. And what we've got there is we've got three females and two men. OK, it's a small sample size. Um, they only had the people that were found dead at home to uh, analyse. Um, but that's what they found. In that sample, histology, there was patchy 
focal. So it's patchy. It's not all the heart muscle, just part of it. It's focal. That's what gives rise to these ectopic foci. This is why this is so dangerous. Interstitial means it's in the tissues. Myocardial means it's in the myocardium, the beating contractile muscle of the heart. T lymphocyte is uh, the type of immune cell that gets in there as a result of the immunological reaction. And macrophages are another type of white blood cell and immune cell that get in there as a result of the inflammatory response. It's these cells that actually facilitate the inflammatory response. But the point is these cells aren't supposed to be there. This is a pathological finding. These are not supposed to be there. This is what almost certainly caused these people's death, predominantly of the CD4 positive series. So these are the type of T lymphocytes, the T helper cells that are stimulating the other cells and stimulating the inflammatory response. And as we said, inflammation is good in some circumstances, but not when it's caused by a pathological immunological reaction, especially if it's in the myocardium. So autopsy findings indicate death due to acute arrhythmogenic cardiac failure. So arrhythmogenic, so a, a dysrhythmia or an, a, an arrhythmia means that the heart is not beating properly and uh, that they've said it's uh, an acute uh, arrhythmogenic. So in other words, it's the arrhythmia that caused the heart failure. So the arrhythmia, the heart is just fluttering and the heart just stops. The blood pressure drops to zero. There's an acute heart failure followed a minute or two later by death. So these foci of, of inflammation where these um, macrophages and uh, lymphocytes were where they weren't supposed to be is almost certainly what caused the fatal uh, arrhythmias. And because there was no one there to treat these patients, they were simply found dead at home. Uh, thus, myocarditis can be potentially lethal complication following an mRNA-based anti-SARS coronavirus vaccine. Now, this is a direct quote from the peer-reviewed journal of, of the American, uh, the uh, German uh, Cardiology Society. Simply direct quote of um, uh, peer-reviewed literature by a group of six senior German pathologists. And uh, I think I'm allowed to say that because we are allowed to talk about rare recognised events because myocarditis is recognised by the um, WHO and the uh, CDC and the, uh, the UK various authorities as a potential side effect. But here we have the histopathology that proves it definitively in quite a high number, five out of 25 deaths. Our findings may aid in uh, adequately diagnosing unclear cases after vaccination. For goodness sake, if people have been vaccinated, let's have a high index of suspicion that this may occur, even if the inflammation was mild and the inflammation was fairly mild in most of these cases, affecting a fairly small area of the myocardium, not enough to affect the contraction of the myocardium on its own, but because they are electrically unstable, they call these ectopic, 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 ectopic focus. There's a focus of electrical activity where there shouldn't be one and the person basically just drops dead. Let's not minimise it. So, in, in a sense, these patients had mild myocarditis. But uh, if you ask them or their relatives, they probably wouldn't think so, because even though it was mild, it was enough to kill them, because by definition, they were all um, uh, post-mortem autopsy findings. Uh, our findings may aid... So, yes, have a high index of suspicion for these things, doctors and nurses out there, please and thus establishing a timely diagnosis in vivo. We want to diagnose in, in life, in vivo, when people are still alive. Monitoring the framework for, ad uh, providing a framework for uh, adequate monitoring and early treatment of severe clinical cases, and indeed mild clinical cases, because even milder cases, all you need is a, an area of ectopic electrical activity that can cause ventricular fibrillation, and that is what can cause death. So there we go, and this is basically a smoking gun. Let's look at it again. Um, we see the abnormal cells in the myocardium causing the damage, it's unequivocal, it's pathological diagnosis. There again with a different cell type. There again with a different level of magnification showing the pathologically damaged areas of infiltration that can give rise to the ectopic electrical focus which can give rise to the ventricular fibrillation which causes death um i'm going to leave it there because it's it's um we're talking about people's lives here
Okay, thank you for watching.